What I really want to do is just to welcome you here this morning uh, to give a special thank you to Ernst Young for hosting uh, today's breakfast uh, on the issue of promoting women's leadership in the public and private sector. And of course to give a very big thank you to our speakers who have turned up and come from different parts of the world to be with us here this morning. Uh, and also of course to you as, as colleagues, and I see many of my MEP colleagues here, uh, for coming along to, to participate in the debate. I'm going to keep my comments really quite brief because I think we all know what the issues are. We know the job that we're here to do. Uh, we also know what the statistics tell us that in fact uh, if you have uh, more gender diversity on company boards, you get improved company performance, uh, you get, uh, uh, you mirror the market better because women control about 70% of global consumer spending decisions, you get a better quality of decision making, you get improved governance and ethics, you get a better use of the talent pool because around 60% of university graduates in Europe are women and in times we think where there are skill shortages and we have an aging population then we need to grab those opportunities uh, of women that are out there. But we all know of course that it's not that easy uh, to get women through uh, to, to board level and to executive level uh, participation. There's been a lot of discussion about women on boards. Uh, there's been some discussion about women in leadership roles in the corporate sector or in senior management roles. Uh, what we are interested in, in addition to all of that uh, in Ernst & Young, is the whole question of women in public sector leadership roles. Because there are a lot of assumptions that the public sector has sorted all these issues out. Uh, that in contrast to the corporate sector or the board scenarios in the public sector, we have had policies in place for a really long time, pretty much as you've just pointed out, in many, many countries, not all, but many countries, and uh, consequently that, you know, we should have made a whole lot more inroads, I suppose, in the public sector in seeing women moving into senior leadership roles. So in order to explore that issue and, and put a bit of data behind it, we've actually developed um, what is on your tables, which is the index, um, which is an index that shows you across the G20 countries the representation of women in senior leadership roles. And, you know, Arlene said I'm passionate about this issue. I mean, I actually discovered feminism at 13, and I thought that at this point in my life these issues would have long been sorted. But strangely, that is not the case. And in fact, what we are finding is that in some countries in the public sector we actually know also going backwards, not necessarily forward. Well, uh, the Ernst & Young research show that despite women constituting a significant part of the overall public sector workforce in all the member states, uh, they remain underrepresented at the top table. And their study looks at a wide range of countries. Since we are in the European Parliament, let's take a brief look on, on Europe. Uh, in uh, the European Parliament, we have our Women's Rights so Committee, and we insist that this should uh, still be called women's, women's, women's Rights um, Committee. Starting on this journey, uh, we actually asked and, and, and equality for women's rights and equality. Uh, and uh, we um, try to gender mainstream the legislation. We try to put a women view on the different directives. What are the consequences of this directive for women and for men? And we also have set up uh, a network in, with women in all the committees being responsible for the gender mainstreaming. And I think in the Commission, like anywhere else in public administration and the private sector, the important thing is no longer, it, it's to be no longer an exception and to make sure that there are you know, other generations which are there uh, the behind waiting to take uh, our jobs and to, to, to grab more of uh, these jobs. So this is a long-term, a long I would say a long-term battle. And I'm saying this from that uh, position of mine now, I guess with even more passion than when I was a younger official waiting to, to go to this uh, high post. Uh, I can see now from my own position that there is still uh, barriers to promotion of women, to putting women on the right position, to stop putting women on, they are going to deal with human resources, you know. Um, there are still this, uh, these barriers to, uh, uh, to all this, and this is um, a fight uh, we, we should never stop. 
we are very, very keen to continue to look very, very closely at the public sector because while big gains have been made, as I said, there's also evidence now that some of those gains are going backwards. And, you know, it's very, very important from our perspective to see more women leaders in leadership roles because governments are dealing with some of the most complex issues that are affecting the 21st century. And so not having diversity of thought and experience at the decision-making tables is a really stupid idea. So to us, it's really about good decision-making and getting the best thinking <coughs> to help solve some of the most complex problems that should be a real driver in the public sector to ensure women move into, more women move into leadership roles.